Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Palm Island, which is a new, very unique card game that's on Kickstarter right now, and I'm going to be doing a solo run through it today, so you can see what it's all about. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel, so that when I make rules goose, you'll know what they are. Okay, have you done so? Then welcome to the island, everybody. Palm Island, to be precise. The island that fits in the palm of your hand. Here's probably the neatest, most unique thing about this game. With this deck of 17 cards, I have got an entire resource gathering, goods conversion, victory point generating euro set in a beautiful, lush, tropical paradise. I play the entire game with just this hand of 17 cards playing through eight rounds and trying to score as many points as possible. Although, I should say before you go going, there's a, several different modes you can play this in. Like I said, I'm doing this solo today because I've only got two hands, so I can only show you one island. But if you pick up a copy of the game, you actually get two full decks of 17 cards so you can play it solo or you can play it two player competitively or cooperatively. If you buy two copies of the game you could actually play a three or four player version of the game again competitively or cooperatively. Now if you want to play cooperatively these hurricane eruption and famine cards get added to the deck and these become goals that everybody's working to try to solve to be able to win or else everybody loses together. If we pay complete if we play competitively, we instead get these outpost cards that uh, we're in a race to try to get as fast as possible because they could be worth two to four points depending on how quickly players get to them. Or instead of these outpost bonus cards, they can be character cards like the scout, the merchant, the warrior, the store master, the builder, the priest, the elder, the raider, that again, players could be racing to recruit to give them special powers, to give them a leg up. Now, this is all, and actually, I believe there are ways you can use these in the solo game as well. And then on top of that, the solo game has this whole other mode where you can kind of play a campaign where what happens to you in one game will move ahead into the next game and the next game is you work on campaign goals through multiple sessions. But those are all the cool advanced ways to play. You can learn more about them by hitting that eye in the top right corner screen and going and checking out the Kickstarter page. Today I am just showing you the bog standard basic way to play. Um, with my little prototype I've got here, bear in mind, uh, it's a little out of date. Uh, some of the cards have been renamed and in fact I've had to take a pin because some uh, balancing has been done. I've actually had this deck of cards for several months now and have been enjoying it. But if again, if you want to see the final, hit that I, go to the Kickstarter page. But otherwise, folks, let's start exploring Palm Island. Now, to set up, what you do is you take your deck and make sure that little icon in the top left is the same on every single card so that all the cards are aligned. Then you shuffle the heck out of it without rearranging or you know uh, realigning any cards. Oops, gotta be careful about that. And this is gonna create a unique island with different I'm not going to say strengths and weaknesses, different opportunities that are available depending on the order these cards come up. So let's just go with this. Now, I've shuffled it up a bit and then I've got to make sure that the round marker is on the bottom of the deck and we're ready to go. And now here's the thing, folks. The reason this is called Palm Island is because you play the whole thing in the palm of your hand. This game never touches the table. So you could play it standing in line at the movie theater or inside the theater waiting for the movie to start or lazing around on the couch or in the back seat of the car. Wherever you want, you have some Euro goods conversion goodness at the ready. So I've got it set up. I'm going to start playing solo and Here's the way it works. At any given time, you have two cards available to you and you have to choose which card you're going to play. The card in your left hand, which is where this whole deck is, and the card in your right hand. Now I say left and right because I am uh, not a southpaw, I'm right-handed, but you could just as easily say, hey, um, you know, the deck in your right hand and the card in your left hand, if, if you're more comfortable holding cards that way, it works the same way. But anyway, so here's how I'm holding it. I, oh, well this is not a great start right up front. I could play the temple. Or I could play the temple. Um, right, so not a very interesting choice. What's going to happen is I'm going to activate one of these cards either to do the action it says on the top, which usually will have me upgrade cards by flipping them or rotating them or various things. Now, in this case, I've got two temples and basically temples at the beginning of the game aren't worth anything, but they are victory point machines. If I upgrade this once by spending one lumber, one fish and two stone, it will upgrade from a crappy useless temple 
to a level one tuple that's worth three victory points. And then later on, if I um, spend two lumber, two fish, and two stone, I can flip it, that's what this icon means, to turn it into a level two temple that is worth six points. And then finally, and this might take me the whole game to do it, if I can pony up three lumber, three fish, and four stone, I can rotate it, you can see 180 degrees, one more time to turn it into a level three temple that is worth 10 points. And it it doesn't get any better than that. So now, of course, at the beginning of the game, these are the only things I've got. I have not found any of my loggers or my fishermen or my quarries that would actually let me get any of these resources. So I cannot play either of these cards to upgrade them. Now, but I have to keep going deeper through the deck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of these cards to basically, once you're done with them, whether you've used them or not, you put them at the bottom of the deck. So I'll go on ahead and I'll just take this temple put it at the bottom, which means this temple now becomes in my right hand. And hey, I've got a quarry. Now this is a more interesting decision. I still can't do anything with this temple other than just bury it at the bottom of the deck. But the quarry gives me another option. If I had two lumber in hand, I could upgrade this quarry, uh, which means to rotate it 180 degrees, at which point in the future, this quarry will start generating stone for me. At the beginning of the game, the quarry, I guess, hasn't been established because it's not generating stone. Um, if I had two fish, instead, I could flip it like this so it would generate stone in a different way. Uh, having two lumber turns it into a level one quarry, um, which could then be flipped over. There's a lot of flipping and manipulation of these cards, but here's the problem, folks. Right now, again, I don't have two lumber, I don't have two fish, so I can't do anything with it. So my next decision is, what am I going to get rid of? Am I going to put the quarry at the bottom of my deck, or am I going to put this temple at the bottom of my deck. Now it's going to take me a while to get all these resources and the temples never actually generate anything for me other than victory points. So I can always try to, to level these up to make them worth points later. So I'm going to put it at the bottom of my deck. So now I know both of my temples are at the bottom of my deck. I am actually starting to customize my my village, and this is something I need to remember. And a future run through of this deck, my two temples are going to come back to back. So if I want to level them up both back to back, I need to have uh, four stone, two lumber, and two fish lying around. But anyway, so I put them both back to back. Now the quarry comes over into my right hand, and once again, I've got a choice. Although, again, not a very interesting one. Um, I can't really get much going until I find the fishermen or the loggers to start giving me some basic resources. Because you can see, uh, regular housing isn't worth anything. But if I had one lumber and one fish, I could flip this over to turn it into level one housing, which is worth a point, and then I could upgrade it. Uh, houses are kind of like the temples, except they're just basically a little bit less expensive and worth less points for all intents and purposes. Now, I don't have the resources. I don't think I want to care about trying to upgrade this now to make it worth points, so I'm going to bury it. So now I know I have buried underneath, here's the bottom of my deck, two temples and a house. So all my upgrade cards are at the bottom. And now I found my blacksmith, which I believe is now called a tool maker. This village is very dysfunctional right from the get-go. My shuffle is not working out very well for me. Once again, I got to choose between these two cards. Um, and right now, since I don't have lumber or fish, because I can't find my loggers, my lumberjacks and my fishermen, I'm going to have to bury one of these two cards. And now this is really probably the first interesting decision because sooner or later, folks, I'm going to find some lumber and some fish. And am I going to want to upgrade this quarry to start getting access to stone? Or am I going to want to upgrade this blacksmith um, to, well, there's a couple things I could do. If I had um, you know, a bigger upgrade, two stone and a fish and a lumber, I could flip it like this to instantly make it a level three blacksmith, which is worth four victory points and does nothing for me. It's kind of like I could just retire this guy. And it's worth a lot of points, but it doesn't do anything. Now, the better upgrade path for this is just to spend one... <clears throat> one um, log and one fish to flip it over. That's what the blue thing is. And so now in the future, the blacksmith will generate fish and logs for me. So here's the thing. I'm giving myself a choice. Do I want to hold on to this so I can upgrade to start getting stone? Or do I want to hold on to this so I can get more immediate and useful access to fish and lumber? I think I'll get rid of the blacksmith. I'll try to upgrade him later. And finally, so that means, again, of these two, I'm choosing him, bury him, uh, he'll come back. 
Finally, folks, one of my loggers is here. And you'll notice I've got a new action. Uh, I can just tap this to the right, and this one is free. Sometimes to tap things to the right, you have to pay resources, basically converting resources and other resources. But in this case, I can tap it for free. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my, I'm going to activate my logger, not my quarry, to give myself one lumber. So I tap it. And after I've used this, this goes to the back of my deck, just like all the other cards you saw me do, but it sticks out like this. And this is a reminder that I have access to one lumber that I can spend any time I want. Now, to upgrade this quarry, I need two lumber, so I need to get another lumber, or I need two fish. Uh, and now, what do I have at the top again? Once again, two quarries! Come on, game! I need to find another lumber. So, again, I've got to activate one of these two things. I'll just go on ahead and bury this one, and now it's getting buried underneath that um, queued up lumber I've got. And hey, it's my second logger. Let's go on ahead and um, let's see. Ooh. Now, this is interesting. I could go on ahead and tap him, so hey, I've got access to two lumber, and now with those two lumber, I could upgrade my quarry to start getting stone. Or instead, um, if I bury this quarry and then put the logger out, once I've got a lumber and a fish, I could upgrade um, to a level one logger, which is worth points, and then eventually, once I flip it, it starts generating double logs. So, these cards all have different upgrade paths. So, do I want to get to more um, log production, or do I want to get to stone production? At this point, I think it's more important for me to get to stone production. So, I'm going to take this logger, I'm just going to activate it to give me access to my second bit of lumber, and now, hey, there's a boat! Finally, I've got access to some fish. Let's go on ahead and activate this one. So I'm keeping this in my hand, so it's at the ready. I'm going to activate this, rotate to its side, which is free. And now, I've got access to two lumber and a fish. And oh my gosh, that, I did not do a very good job of shuffling, folks. I put all of my resources right next to each other. That's why they were so hard to find. I should have shuffled a little bit more, obviously. Um, but anyway, so now I've got a choice. I could... Um, well, I could just go on ahead and uh, set up so I've got a fourth lumber in the queue. And now, you can never have more than four resources in the queue. If I had another card here that I could tap, I would have to get rid of one of these. But anyway, let's go with it. And hey, now I've got two quarries again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to upgrade this quarry. Uh, I didn't get two fish, so I can't upgrade it by flipping it this way. So instead, I'm going to spend two lumber. I do that by taking this. I don't rearrange the value of the cards. There's one. There's two. And I have just spent two lumber to flip this 180 degrees, and now this is a functioning quarry. But unfortunately, and you, so you see, later on I can flip it and get some stone, but for now, after I upgrade it, it goes back to the bottom of my deck. I will not get access to that quarry until I go through this deck a second time. And now, um, once again, I've always got two cards at the ready. I've got another quarry, which I cannot upgrade because I do not have two fish or two lumber, but hey, here's another fisherman. And so, what do I want to do? Do I want to tap this to get access to a fish? Because then I'd have two fish and I could upgrade, I could activate this quarry as well. Or, I could spend one fish to upgrade this fish to get more fish later. And so, do I want to up my um, stone production or do I want to update my fish production? Uh, because I could go either way. If I just flip this, then I've got access to two fish. And then I have put two functioning quarries in my deck. Or instead, do I just go on ahead and spend this to say, hey, look, I can spend one fish to either rotate it into a, double, a level one, or I can flip it like this, which means, hey, in the future, this boat produces fish and lumber. Let's go with that. So that fish I had laying around, I used it to flip this. And now, once again, this goes, it gets buried in the bottom, but it'll show up later. And so, uh, once again, I've got a choice. I've got only one lumber I could spend. I would need two lumber to activate this quarry. I need a lumber and a fish to upgrade this housing. Uh, one lumber is not going to do either. So once again, I got to bury one of these cards. I'll bury this housing. And now uh, there's a large market. Now, this is actually named something else. I forget the trade house, I think. Because you'll notice uh, it used to be more expensive. It used to cost two fish or two lumber to upgrade this card. But that's been downgraded. So with one lumber, I could upgrade this card. So I could spend this to basically flip this large market over. Now this large market, the markets, are, or trade house is going to be called, if I had two lumber in the queue, I could spend those two lumber to basically, I'd flip those back up to flip this, so I could turn two lumber into a lumber and a fish. It's basically engaging in trade. Or I could turn two fish into a lumber and a fish. That's if I had this right now. But I don't. 
So, what am I going to do? Am I going to activate this card or bury one of these two cards? Because I've only got one lumber. I think I'm going to go on ahead and sped this last lumber I've got to upgrade this. You can see I spent one lumber, so I flip this over. And now, this has become a market house that generates three fish. And remember, I did that other fish upgrade as well, instead of doing the far, um, all right, and it goes to the bottom of the deck. So later on, I can convert two lumber into three fish. So I am starting to make a village that really specializes in fish. Uh, big time. Okay, and meanwhile, now I found my regular market. And so again, I've got to decide which of these I'm going to use. If I had one lumber or one fish, I could generate a stone, but I don't have either. So since I have no resources, one of these two cards has got to get buried. Am I going to keep on holding this quarry to hopefully upgrade it? I think no. I've already upgraded one of them. I'm going to go ahead and bury this, put this in my other hand, because perfect. Here's a, another boat of another fisherman. I'll go on ahead and use him to catch some fish. And hey, I've made it through my first pass of the deck. But, all right, so I can activate this card or this card. I've got one fish. I'm going to spend that fish to um, basically activate this market. And now I've got access to one stone. And this comes over here. It's in my hand. Whenever these go in my hand, I flip them. I put them, because this is my timer. This represents that I, in this game, get to go through this deck eight times. I've just gone through it the first time, and this is at the bottom. And I'll know when I go through the second time. Once I've gone through eight times, I will have done all the upgrading and leveling up of the... Hey, hey, hey remember those two temples? Here they are again. And unfortunately, I've got one stone. I need two stone. So I have not really set myself up. Now... Uh, I could have gone through that first deck in a different way that might have set me up so that by the time I got here, I had all the resources I needed to level this up and start making some points. But as it is, I didn't. So I'm just going to go ahead and bury this. This comes over to my hand again. I'll bury this again. This comes over to my hand again. I'll bury this. So I've got two temples and a house, all just back to back. They're the first thing that pops up when I go through the deck. And hey, here we are at the blacksmith. All righty. Um, I need... Um, what to up to to make the blacksmith retire to get a lot of points, but then this de this card just becomes useless to me. Then I only have sixteen valuable card or useful cards in the deck. Uh, I need all this, but instead I am just going to hold this in my hand. I'm going to go on ahead and chop down some trees. So now I have access to lumber and stone. And hey, you know what? If I had access to lumber and fish, I could upgrade this card. So I'm going to wait a little bit. I'll go on ahead and bury this quarry. Because I already have one functioning quarry. And then, oh, that revealed a logger. I'll go on ahead and activate the logger. And now I've got access to two lumber, one stone. And hey, here's the fish I need. I'll just go on ahead and give myself some fish really quick. And boom. I wanted to upgrade this. I will go on ahead and spend this log and this fish to upgrade this blacksmith. Now, here's an interesting thing. I, you know, I haven't spent this stone yet. And if I just keep digging deeper and deeper, you can see I've got, oops, just dropped my um, fish. There we go. Oops. No, no, no. It was a level one fish. There we go. I've got this many more cards before I eventually find this rock. If I don't spend this rock by the time I get to it, I will lose it. This is a use it or lose it game. So I've got to make a decision now. Based on what I know is coming, because I've been basically building this deck or rearranging this deck as I go. Do I just want to upgrade this blacksmith right now um, and maybe run the risk of not finding use for this stone? I think I will. I'll go on ahead and spend this lumber and this fish, meaning I've still got one stone and one lumber to flip the blacksmith. And now later on, the blacksmith for free will generate a uh, lumber and fish. All right, and so that goes back into the bottom of my deck. And now I've got another logger. Okay, what do I want? Um, ooh, this is interesting. So I could go on ahead and just flip this. So I've got two stone ready, or I could activate this. So I've got two logs because then once I get one fish, two logs and a fish means I could flip this quarry over so that it would become a double stone generator. So do I want to get more stone in my hand right now to pay for the cards that are coming up? Or do I want to wait a little bit? I think I'll wait a little bit. I'll go on ahead, and now I've got a stone and two lumber. This quarry comes over into my hand. And oh, hey, remember this uh, upgraded boathouse I got? Now I'll go on ahead and flip it. And remember, I can only have up to four resource cards in the ready. I can't have any more in the queue. But now, um, hey, I could go on ahead and pay two lumber and one fish. I will do that. I will play this lumber. 
And this lumber and this fish, because when you have doubles like this, you don't get change. So it's perfect that this is exactly what I need. I spent that lumber, that fish, and the other lumber to basically flip this quarry, and I've upgraded it to a double producing quarry for free, although I won't get access to it till the third time I go through the deck. And then this housing comes over. This is my other housing. Um, and alrighty, so what do I got now? I've got access to one stone, one lumber, and I'm getting closer and closer to the stone. If I don't find a, a cost for this stone pretty soon, I will lose it. So what do I want to do? Well, hey, I've got one lumber. That's enough to um, flip this market um, over such that instead of it producing three fish, it produces three stone in the future. So do I want to do that? Um, but to, produ and to produce three stone, I need three. Yeah, you know what? let's go ahead and do that. I, uh, but if I get to a point where I could, I, I could use the stone and the lumber to use the stone, I don't want to waste that stone. And I'm, so I want to keep this log around so I can combine it with the stone to get a different upgrade down the road. So that means I'm just going to go on ahead and bury this housing at the bottom of the deck. And this will stick around. I, this is in my other hand. I've got access to this if I need to. Um, but what do I want to do instead? All right. So I either activate one of these. I can't activate this because I do not have two lumber or two fish. Um, but I could activate this if I want to spend the one lumber to turn this into a stone market instead of a fish market. Uh, -uh I still, although, oh no, I think I've gone too long. Oh, see, ah, I, I haven't memorized exactly how it goes. I'm, I'm going to take a chance. I've still got this if I need it. I'm just going to go ahead and bury the quarry. And all right, it's a boat. And yep, all right, I waited too long. I should have used this stone for something else. I'm going to throw it away now because I can feel my next card is this stone and it's going to get lost. So uh, with that in mind, all righty, what am I going to do? I guess I will go on ahead. Well, I could generate some fish and then I'm going to lose this stone. I could spend, yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, if I'm going to lose that stone because I went through the whole deck and never used it, so that was kind of a bad move on my part. In the meantime, I will go on ahead and spend this lumber to um, upgrade, to flip this a second time to convert this into a massive stone producer. And then this comes out. You always have two cards in your hand. But oh no, I waited too long. I never used this stone, so I wasted it. It gets unused, goes to the bottom of the deck. And now, hey, I've gone through this deck two times. Now I'm on my third trip through the deck. And what have I got? Well, I can generate some fish. And then, hey, here's those temples again. Oh my gosh, temple, temple, housing. And what am I going to do? OK, I um, have access to one fish. If I had one log, I could go. I'll just go on ahead and give myself another log putting it at the bottom of my deck. And now I can't do any of these things with the quarry. I could give myself another log. Yeah, I'll give myself another log. And then I'll spend both of these logs to um, rotate this quarry so it's another stone generator later. In the meantime, I'll give myself uh, another. And let's see, I've got one fish. So Am I, again, am I going to spend this fish to upgrade this, uh, this, this boat card, or am I just going to give myself some more fish right now? I will give myself some more fish. And so, hey, here's my blacksmith who for free could generate a stone, or I'm sorry, not stone, a lumber and a fish. So that'd be great, but if I could just give myself another stone, then I could turn this blacksmith into a super generator. Comes over into my hand, what do I want to do? Um, I'm going to hold on to this. I want to get a stone so I can do another upgrade. In the meantime, um, all right, so I've got this boathouse. I will spend this fish and this lumber to upgrade this boathouse so it now generates more fish. It'll come up later. And boom, here's what I was waiting for, folks. Remember that upgraded quarry I've got? I'll go on ahead and generate double stone. And now this is unfortunate. It's a little um, spent. Oh, oh, but I just got rid of my lumber. So now I need lumber to upgrade this thing. Although this is interesting, instead, if I get lumber, I could go on ahead and upgrade this, or I could just go on ahead and do this, and now I've got two fish, two stone, and one lumber, so I've got access to a lot more stuff for other upgrades. Hmm. In fact, actually, if I wanted, I could go on ahead and generate this, and then I've got my housing in my hand. I, I've got a fish and a lumber right there. I could use this as my first upgrade and score a point by upgrading this housing. Interesting. Or I've got two fish, so I could use these two fish to flip this quarry, which is doing nothing for me. So do I want to start scoring points? Uh-uh, that's not what I want to do. I want to spend the two fish. Although, unfortunately, I'm overpaying. I'm paying one fish and then another fish, and I'm throwing that lumber away to flip this quarry. 
so that it generates stone for me in the future. And then in the meantime, hey, I up show, oh, shows up my large market. I would like to get all this. Oh man, that's five stone. This is too much stone. I don't need this much stone yet. I need it when I'm trying to build my bigger temples and I'm still kind of on the small temples right now. Oh my gosh. Um, what am I going to do? Well, I can't, um, I can't do anything with it because I need two, I don't need two stone, I need two um, lumber or two fish to generate three stone. So you can see, I have not necessarily built my market in the smartest way. I've got both of these things generating big stone for me, but I don't need five stone at any given time. I have not played smart. I'll just go on ahead. I would like to, so I'll bury this because I've still got two stone on hand. And so, hey, that's a market. Um, again, it doesn't want any stone for anything, but I'll bring it over here. Because I wouldn't mind upgrading it. And hey, we've gone through this three. I'm on my fourth trip and I haven't upgraded a single. Oh my gosh, folks, I am doing terribly. Um, what am I going to do? Um, hey, on my boats, I will go on ahead and give myself a fish. And now look at this. For the first time, I've got two stone and a fish, but I don't have the lumber I need to upgrade my temple. No! No! But here's what I can do. I can spend this fish, because it's one lumber or one fish, to, ah, to do this market to make more stone. I have made a stone generating um, village and it's terrible, folks. I have terribly designed my village. Let's just go on ahead and get rid of this. I don't need more stone right now. I'll hold this uh, um, and bury it. I'll keep this village in my hand. Um, although now, do I dump this housing? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upgrade one of these things. All right, so there we go. Because remember, I remember the loggers came next because they were all kind of bundled together too. So the logger goes in and now, folks, I have two stone, one fish, and one lumber. I'm going to spend all of that to upgrade to a level one. That's worth three points. It goes away. A new log comes out. I will prep the log. I will uh, prep this quarry. I will prep this log. I will prep this fish. And that was kind of foolish because now my, my um, actually, that was a bit dumb. Hold on a second. I should be upgrading some of these things. So if I prepped a couple things, um, right, but I, yeah, I can't prep, yeah, I would need um, two lumber, so I can't prep that. I, ca I cannot upgrade that, because again, I don't have fish. Um, and I would need fish to upgrade this boathouse. Again, I don't have it. And so then I come to this boathouse where, oh, look, this is so great. It'll generate stuff, but I got to get rid of something. All right, I'll generate, I'll get rid of that log to make room for this log and two fish. And now I'll get rid of this stone so I can make room for these two stone. And now look at all these resources I've got, folks. I can do all kinds of stuff. Um, although, here comes the blacksmith. So, um, I'm, I'm, I've gone from zero to hero. Where are all those temples? Now I've got all the resources I need to, or those houses to start upgrading them. I buried them all. So what do I do? Do I just start, do I keep this big group of stuff so that I can get to them quicker and start upgrading? Um, do I upgrade other stuff along the way? Because, uh, hey, I could upgrade this level one blacksmith to a level two blacksmith, uh, at which point if I upgrade him again, he again gets to the retirement. So I could have retired him immediately or I can use him for a while and then retire him to get points if I want to. Um, because, hey, I do have lumber, fish, and stone. Uh, I'd probably use this and this, although I'd be, again, I'd be way overpaying. Don't like that. And you know, as opposed to this, uh, to, uh, to upgrade this quarry, I need two fish and a lumber. Let's go on ahead and just spend this two fish and a lumber, because that fits perfectly to upgrade this quarry. So it's a bigger, I'm more stone generation. Ah, okay. And then here we are. And if I wanted to spend two fish or two lumber, I could get to my large market, which I don't need because I have designed my village very poorly. I have done better at this game, folks, I promise. Um, now, what I could do is I could go on ahead now. Hey, uh, for free, I'll generate this. So now I've got a bunch more resources again. I've got some. Oh, and there's a house. All righty, I'm going to upgrade this house. I need one fish and one lumber. So I'll just use these two cards that are most likely going to get um, expired if I don't use them soon to upgrade this housing. Yeah, and um, let's see, oh, sorry, not that way, this way. I just scored one point and now I've got another. I've made it through the deck, my fourth time. And now I'm, I'm going through my fifth time. So basically what I do is I just take this, I flip it back down to a one because I'm going to go through it ultimately eight times. And hey, um, you know what? I think I might finally get some of those done. I'll go on ahead and prep this large market. So I've got more stone in my hand and then I've got a boat. Wait a minute, weren't all those, oh, that's right, I split them up. 
I will go on ahead and prepare this. All uh, right, so now I've got four cards worth of resources. I can't hold any more. And there's my temple, folks. Yeah, baby. Let's spend this two stone and this one fish and this one lumber to upgrade this temple. So that's three points, it goes to the end. And now next time, I, when I get to it, I need two um, fish and uh, lumber and three stone. So I'm starting to make some points. In the meantime, this is still in my hand. So, um, although all it's gonna do is generate stone for me. No, if I could, I could. All right, so basically, I could use this market. I could spend that fish to give myself one stone. I don't need that. If I could upgrade this now, which would require two fish or two lumber, I would do that to get more flexibility, but I can't. I want to hold on to that housing. I want to start upgrading, so I'm going to bring this over. And hey, that's another logger. I'll go on ahead and generate the log. And, ooh, here's my level three temple, I'd, or my three-point temple. I'd like to go further. I've got the three stone. I've got the one fish. I've got the one lumber, but I need one more. So let's go on ahead and bury this housing and hold on to this temple. Hey, here's my second log. Now if I can just get one more fish, this temple can go to uh, be worth six points. And then 10 points if I upgrade it again. Yeah, baby! All righty. So I just need one more fish. I know a fish is coming. Um, but on the flip side, I've got the two lumber and the one fish. I could upgrade this quarry right now um, to start generating. But you know what? I have more than enough stone generation. Let's go on ahead and bury that. Keep this temple at the ready. And now it's a logger. Was that what I needed? Yes. No. Oops. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, no, I need one more fish. Hmm. If I spend a fit, I could upgrade this, which means I start getting to the point where it starts generating double logs for me. And as you can see, I'm going to be starting to need double logs pretty soon. But if I can just get a fish, I just need one more fish and I can get this. So, and here's the thing. If I had perfect memory, I'd remember where my fish are, but I don't. But I think, I've got a feeling I'm generating some more fish, so I'm just going to go on ahead and bury this. And there it is, folks. Here's my fish. Yeah. Oh, no. But, I, okay, I can't have five cards, so what do I have to get rid of? Um, oh no, 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 I've got the three stone. I have to, I can only have four. If I bring this fish out, I've got five cards, it's not enough. I need to bring a double fish out. Okay, so I'm just gonna go on ahead and bury this to, um, to go on ahead and bear, to uh, not do that fish, to get my super upgraded one. Here it is. Look at all this stuff I've got, folks. I have three lumber, two fish, three, I gotta spend all of it. It all goes away, and I have now flipped this to a six-point temple. It goes away. Here's the quarry. I've got two stone. Here's the blacksmith. I've got some more stuff. Here's the large market. I could give myself more stone. Um, or, oh, no, no. I, no, I can't because I don't have two fish lumber, so I hold on to this. Do I bury this and do the fish, et cetera, et cetera? Oh, my gosh. Oh, let's just keep going. All right. So, I could give myself more stone, but I've got those houses. I don't think I need this right now. I'm gonna go on ahead and bury this, and let's see what I reveal. All right, that's another log. Um, right, I've got a fish and a log right there that's gonna let me upgrade this, because hey, now this logger is worth one point, and then if I flip it, it'll start generating double logs. So let's do that. All right, and now here's a double quarry. I can have four stone at the ready. I, but I generate too much stone. I'm not generating enough other stuff. But what the heck, I'll do it anyway. So I've got four stone in hand, and I could have one fish in hand if I wanted. I could upgrade this housing. If I get this fish, I just need one lumber. All right, so, all right, and now I'm going through the second time. This is my sixth time through the deck of eight. And once I've gone through eight times, I basically just sum up however many points I've got. And here we are, back to those temples. I've got all the stone I need, but I do not have the fish or the lumber I need. This temple, not going to happen. This market, I don't need more stone right now. No, I don't. Um, right, so that's not good. But this housing, right, but I was holding one housing. So do I, uh, do I dump this housing to hold this housing so I can get to level one, or do I dump this z level zero housing? I, I just want one more lumber. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I'll take the logger, and hey, I've been holding on to this for a while. I'll spend two stone, which is overkill, and one fish. Oops, there we go. Sorry, other stone. There's my other stone. They stay. And I have just bumped this up to a level two. That's three more points, one more upgrade, and it goes to six, and it's maxed out.
And meanwhile, did I say I was the Stone King? I have definitely made a very stone-centric um, village, which is good for the highest level temples, but I haven't gotten to those highest level temples yet. And I'm on my, what is it, my sixth trip through this deck, and what am I going to do? Um, am I going to give myself some more stone? Am I just going to dump this? Am I going to give myself some more logs? Am I going to try to upgrade this? Etc. Etc. Folks, I think I'm going to stop right there because that should give you a good idea of what Palm Island is all about. And now if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in five, four, three, two, one.